Hello and welcome back to Multivariable Calculus, a video series where we do real analysis with several variables. And now in today's part 14, we will talk a little bit about potentials for vector fields. However, as always, before we start with that, I really want to thank all the nice people who support this channel on Steady via PayPal or by other means. And you know, as a supporter, you can use the PDF version and the quiz for this video. Okay, then let's start talking about vector fields. Indeed, the purpose of this video is to show you an application of Schwarz's theorem from the last video. And in order to do that, we have to introduce the notion of a vector field. Indeed, this is not complicated at all, essentially it's just a map that is continuously differentiable. And important to remember is, the values should be vectors, so elements of Rn again. So you see, what we have here is that for each point in the domain, which could be the whole Rn, we put a vector from Rn to it. So for example, if we consider R2, we have a nice visualization for this. So we consider this point here in the domain, and now we can visualize the value of the map as an arrow in Rn as well. And of course, the important part is, we can do this for every point here in the domain. So it could be a complicated picture, but you should have the idea in mind. Moreover, you should see what we have done here in R2, you can do in the same manner for higher dimensions. For example, for R3, you can still visualize it with arrows in the space. Okay, and then at this point, there is a natural question we can ask. This is the case because we have already seen such vector fields. Namely, if we consider a function f defined on Rn, but now with values in R, then we know that the gradient of f, if it's defined, is a map from Rn into Rn. In other words, the gradient is exactly such a vector field if it's continuously differentiable. Therefore, the natural question is, can we represent such a vector field v with a gradient f? So more precisely, the question is, do we find such a function f such that v of x for every point x in Rn fulfills that it is equal to the gradient of f at the point x? And of course, at this point, you should see, we can easily generalize this to open domains in Rn. Okay, but now you should see, this question only makes sense if our function f is c2. So it's two times continuously differentiable. So you see, this is the minimal thing we need. Moreover, in this case here, such a function f is called a potential function for the vector field v. So you can say, the potential function carries all the information for the vector field v. However, we will not answer this question in general for now, but we will give a necessary condition for the existence of such a function. Indeed, we get this immediately from Schwarz's theorem. So I would say, let's calculate it. So let's start with the partial derivative of one component of v. So we take the ith component of v and form the partial derivative with respect to xj. So this means we have the ith component here of the gradient of f. However, you know the gradient is formed out of partial derivatives. In other words, instead of the gradient, we can write a partial derivative here. So this thing here is the partial derivative of f with respect to xi. And then you see, exactly at this point, we can use Schwarz's theorem. This means we are able to exchange the order of the partial derivatives without changing the result. Hence, what we have now is first the partial derivative with respect to xi and then with respect to xj. And then, as you might already see, we can reformulate that with a gradient. Of course, it's the same as before, but with exchanged indices. And then we just have to translate it again to the vector field v. So more precisely, now we have the jth component of v and we have the partial derivative with respect to xi. Okay, and here we see, we have shown that this is the necessary condition. Both partial derivatives have to be the same. So obviously for all i, j and for all x. Okay, so this is the condition you can remember. It's necessary for the existence of such a potential function. 
And with this, I would say we can look at an example. We simply take a vector field where this necessary condition is not fulfilled. And it turns out that it is not hard at all to find such an example in R2. So for example, we can do it by choosing the point x1, x2 and send it to the vector that is given by a rotation of this vector. So more precisely, it's minus x2, x1. So indeed, we can easily visualize this in the plane. So for example, for the points on the axes, we have these vectors here. And indeed, it's not hard at all to fill in the other ones. So you see, roughly what we get is such a vector field that looks like a rotation around the origin. Okay, and now the crucial part is that this condition here is not fulfilled for this v. So let's immediately calculate dv1 dx2. So this is not complicated at all. We immediately see this is minus 1. And on the other hand, we can calculate dv2 dx1. Also here, we can see the derivative is not complicated. It's equal to 1. Hence, you see, the interesting point here is the derivatives don't coincide. So here, it's not equal. Therefore, we can immediately conclude for this vector field, there is no potential function f. In fact, this result will be important later when we calculate so-called curves integral for this vector field v. And with this, I really hope that I see you in the next videos. Have a nice day and bye.